What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're back with another installment of the System Crafters live streams, which we do every Friday, where the System Crafters community gets together to talk about uh, whatever fun topic that I've got concocted for the week. And uh, this week I have one that should be pretty fun, uh, so long as it doesn't, you know, result in me crashing my EXWM setup again, like what just happened uh, two minutes ago. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Uh, before I get started, let's say hello to some folks, um, some some very, very early attendees who probably aren't here at the moment, but Hyder and Todd, um, and then uh, Rainus, Samuel Jackson, Bill, uh, Gunn, Ka uh, Key, Elephant, someone with characters that doesn't actually show up on uh, my uh, Firefox, I don't know why, uh, Alejandro, Eric, Daigo, Jafer, uh, Stefan, Jafer says, looking forward to this weird idea, yeah, me too, we're going to see how far we can get with it. Hello to uh, Appenzell, F Society, Marcel, Edge Crusher, Retracing, Technomog, Richard. Thanks everybody for showing up today. Benoit and Case also I see in Twitch chat. David. So, oh, and actually it looks like to our luck uh, restream, or what, what am I using for this? Uh, Streamlabs decided a, a decent font color today for uh, the, the chat overlay, so that's kind of helpful. Hello, Piotr. So, um, before we get started in the main topic for today, I got a few updates. Um, first of all, I did not make that Vertigo Extensions video that I mentioned last week uh, in the stream, uh, mainly because uh, right after I mentioned I was going to do that, the next day, uh, Karthik decided to post a video that he made about Vertigo Extensions, which I think is a very good video, and I decided to let you watch that one instead. Um, so I, that's up on YouTube. If you follow the Emacs Reddit, you probably saw this um, last week. Let's see if I can try to open that up really quick. But basically, he just gives, gives a nice run through of all of the um, extensions for Vertic Vertico that are currently, eh, we get to see ads here. But anyway, um, the extensions for Vertico that you might want to try out. Um, there's been a few extensions that have been in development for a while uh, that are sort of quote unquote released that you can just pull in from the Vertigo package. So uh, definitely worth taking a look at uh, Karthik's video going through uh, the ones that you might want to try out. Um, also, I'm, I'm working on a couple other video ideas instead of doing that one. Now, I'll do that video that I, I plan to do for Vertigo, you know, in a, in a little while, but uh, I'm going to switch to some other things first. Uh, I think it'll be um, uh, interesting to get started on some of the other things I have in mind too. So we'll we'll definitely have a video out this week. I didn't have one this week just mainly because I was so busy, but uh, we'll, we'll get it going. Um, and also on the Flux Harmonic channel this week, uh, I actually started working on writing a custom scripting language, sort of to replace Guile Scheme for various reasons. If you go look at the show notes, I've got linked here and watch the recording, you'll get more of an, uh, information about why I decided to do that. But I think it's going to make the streams a lot more fun and interesting to have more of the stuff being written from scratch. So uh, if you're interested in writing things in C or you're just sort of curious about how somebody would go about that, definitely check that uh, channel out because we do streams twice a week there. And uh, lastly, uh, the Geeks Days conference is looking for presenters. So um, if you are a user of Geeks, which we've talked about a little bit on this channel, um, and you've Try to figure out something, you know, how to package a certain type of software or maybe set up a certain kind of hardware or anything that might be of interest to um, the general Geeks user public. Uh, definitely submit a, a proposal to the conference. Uh, the conference is pretty soon from now. It's not like the Emacs Conf where they were asking for proposals like months in advance. Uh, the conference is like a month from now, basically. So you may have to get your proposals in pretty soon. 
but um, I think that you know any type of talk about geeks is is uh, doable there. I don't know if I'll submit one because I don't really have anything particular in mind to do just yet. But um, but definitely I would like to see other people that we know uh, submitting things there, which would be cool. Uh, let's see. Let me check the chat really quick. Uh, Elephant says, I've been configuring my Pine phone to be more and more Emacs centric recently, and my little brother who vaguely knows what Emacs is made a really good point. He's worried that I'm going to get mugged, and I'm going to be like, time out. I accidentally put my Emacs in flubo mode, and it'll take 20 minutes before I can call emergency services. Well, I mean, your first problem is going to be using uh, any of the current Pine phone distributions because uh, they're a little bit flaky. It's just sort of the way it is. I've tried a couple of them, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nice, but. It's hard to find one that feels like, you know, solid enough to use day to day. Let's see. Now, Alejandro is recommending using org babel uh, load file to have a really slow startup. That could be one thing we could do. All right. So uh, today we're going to try to do the unthinkable, which is basically to build the world's worst Emacs configuration. And what I mean by that is just building one that's so absolutely unbearable that uh, nobody would ever want to use it, aside from the fact that it's just funny to see how bad Emacs could actually be if you tried to make it horrible. So um, I've already been gathering some suggestions from people on Reddit uh, in the Reddit post that I made for this uh, stream and also for from the System Crafters IRC, but I haven't actually captured them all. Um, so if you've already made a suggestion, you might have to send it to me again because I didn't have any time to go back and look over those again. Uh, but I want suggestions for what we can do um, in this stream. Obviously, you can just tell me suggestions in the chat, but if you have like code snippets or any other ideas that require sending links, uh, YouTube tends to eat those if you try to send something as a link in, in the chat. So uh, you can go to the Emacs from Hell repository and uh, file an issue there if you want to let me know about uh, something that I should try. Uh, I think I've got it pulled up in a nightly window here. Yeah, so it's basically just a, a repo with nothing there yet except for just a blank init.el file. But whenever we I do some of the work here to make this configuration. I'll make commits here and you can also su give your suggestions there in the issues. So uh, that should be pretty fun. So uh, what I would like to try to do is um, establish what the pillars of evil are for this, you know, creating the worst configuration possible. Um, so the categories under which we will torment the user of this infernal configuration. Uh, and definitely, like I said, suggest more uh, categories in this case. Uh, but uh, the ground rules are that it shouldn't actually destroy the user system, uh, though it can terrorize the Emacs session. So if, if it, it's things that are just, you know, absolutely annoying to use or, you know, it could delete buffers and stuff, but definitely don't mess with the file system or, you know, anything that could you know cause irreparable damage to a person's uh, uh, computing environment. So uh, the first pillar of evil would be sensory harassment and by that I say I mean it needs a a horrible appearance it needs to be just difficult to look at which is going to make it hard for us to actually do the stream probably because I don't know you know how easy it's going to be to look at um, someone in the um uh, the early chat Todd suggested to do the hot dog stand theme from Windows 95 and I actually have been joking around with uh, with Case on IRC about that for a while and uh, yeah, that we're probably going to do something like that. Just make it absolutely terrible in terms of what colors we use. Uh, also, it should sound really annoying. It would be funny if we could actually play some sounds randomly. You know, just give us give it that sort of haunted house vibe, um, uh, or also just to be you know gener generally surprising in terms of what happens. Because normally Emacs doesn't make noises except for if you you know start to backspace and your uh, operating system beeps at you. So uh, we should make it really annoying in that case. Uh, also, user imprisonment. Uh, the FSF and the GNU project are wrong about user freedom. Uh, users actually deserve to be imprisoned. So we should uh, do what we can to make it so that the user is uh, kind of stuck with the situation and not able to uh, to get out of it. Uh, and for all these, definitely suggest your own ways that we can fulfill these uh, pillars of evil. And the last one is cursed behavior. So just the general haunting of GNU Emacs. You know, things executing randomly. Uh, normal behaviors, 
uh, suddenly not operating the way they're supposed to. Uh, just that kind of thing, you know. Just imagine that you walked into a haunted house of Emacs, and uh, you know, things just started going horribly wrong. So, a lot of things going in the chat right now. Uh, let's see. K says, advise self-insert care to add 10 to the character that it inserts. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm thinking about. That That's a, a really good one to, to start with. I mean, there's a number of things you could do with self-insert care that would be extremely annoying. Uh, Elephant says, I think there's a package for st simulating mechanical keyboard sounds on key press. Yeah, we did that on stream and it scared the hell out of me, which was probably the, one of the funnier moments in any of the streams. Uh, choose a horrible font. Yes. Uh, green on red font face. Yeah, we would not be able to read that for sure. Let's see. Add the time to add the typewriter sound package. Yeah, that I think we need something worse than that and a little bit more random. Uh, so here's one way you can help. Uh, if you want to go find some really horrible sounds to uh, to wire up into Emacs and then um, maybe we could start an issue here. Let's see. A certain issue on the GitHub repo. Oh, I'm not signed in. Um, somebody go create an issue on the repo for gathering links to sounds that we should try out. And then people can just go add more there in the comments. And uh, then we can sort of gather a list of WAV files or something. I'm going to use the A play command to play these sounds, I think, just so that it doesn't hang Emacs completely. So uh, that'll be fun. Thomas says, uh, this sounds like uh, should have been broadcasted on April 1st. Yeah, probably so. But, uh, you know, I didn't really have a good idea for the stream today. And it just sort of came to me while we were chat chatting in the IRC last night. So I figured it was uh, a good one to go with for now. All right. So let me uh, pull up what I've got so far, which is nothing. Um... I'm going to run it in Geek Shell mainly because I'm trying to isolate it from other stuff. I mean, it's not going to isolate it from deleting my file system, but uh, it, it will keep it away from other programs so we have a more pure environment to work with. So what we have right now is sort of bad enough visually um, <laughs> with the extremely white background that is going to blind everyone. So here's our starting point. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we should start with the uh, the visual aberrances. So I need to remember how to actually set up a, a new theme in uh, Emacs. There's, I think there's like def theme or something. So if I can, we won't be looking at this the whole time. In fact, let me just, uh, can't delete the only side window. Okay, whatever, let's cook that. Let's go into init.el for the project. Code Emacs from hell, init.el, okay. All right, so define our ghoulish theme. So I think um, def theme, is that, that, is that right? Control H O def theme. Okay. Anika says the white background is the worst Emacs comp already. Uh, Gun, uh, Gun says uh, pr program a random typewriter jam function in Emacs. We could definitely try to do something like that. Or like buffer all the characters and then randomly start spewing them out at another point in the future. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see. Def theme. Declare theme to be a custom theme. Uh, custom make theme feature. Any theme foo should be defined. I think there's a way to do this. I mean, otherwise, what we'll just do is you know start setting faces directly. Gonzalo says, "Have you heard about Hacker Typer? I don't know if it exists. Something like that for Emacs. Randomly activate it would be funny. Yeah, it was just like really loud mechanical keyboard sounds." Custom theme set faces, custom theme set variables. Okay, I think that's basically the approach we need here. Um, I would imagine that we can activate this without having to put it in a theme file, but I could be wrong about that. Can we put that in the right place? Come on. Okay, so def theme, hell. We're gonna call it hell here also. I also have to remember how to do the, uh, the face specifications. Horrible for your eyes. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm evaling this in the wrong Emacs. I should probably pull it up in the other one. So let's go into Emacs. We'll pull up. Um, let's let's get rid of this window for now. 
Pull up init.el. Come on. Come on. Okay. Oops. No evil mode. It's not evil enough yet. So, uh, can I do load theme? Hell. Unable to find theme files. I may have to actually set that up. Please omit documentation streams from all functions. I should just go and try to rip them all off, basically. All right, hold on a second. Okay, so um, let's see. I should really pull evil mode in here because it's going to drive me insane otherwise. Just to some, some basic degree. I don't have use package either. Uh, so package install evil. Is that going to work? I don't have a uh, Melpa either set up. Ah, that's cool. So I guess it pulled it from uh, non GNU Elpa, which is very useful in this case. Okay, so at least we have evil mode and it won't drive me so insane. Oh, come on. Can I just launch evil mode? Let's go, evil mode. Thank God, all right. What is happening? Like, it's already bad, and I haven't even done anything yet. Why is my keyboard not working? <laughs> Holy hell. Evil mode. Okay, I think global evil mode. No. Turn on evil mode. Is it going to work? J and K are undefined. Man, honestly, like, this is good enough as it is. All right, let's just let's get that out of here. Evil mode. Turn off evil mode. Okay, back to where we were. And as you can see, I am terrible with the normal Emacs key bindings because I've gotten so dependent on evil mode over time. Cool. So def theme hell. Uh, maybe you have to put this in another file. I can't remember if I have to uh, have like a theme folder or Let's see. Oh God. Seriously, I can't even press Control H F. Control H F. There we go. Um, is that the right one? No. Control H V. I really need Vertigo too. This is gonna be horrifying. Um, let's go with the other. Let's see. Theme path. Custom theme load path. List of directories to search for custom theme files. Cool. So we'll do this. Um. A uh, hell theme. Dot el. Ah, crap. All right, come on. Let's get out of that. Then in this one, let's go into hell theme. Okay. Sorry, if you're hearing screaming in the background, it's not part of the stream. It's because my child is very upset. <laughs> okay, so let me... Yeah, I know I'm doing a really terrible job of, uh, of even functioning without all my own setup. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out. There we go. I'm not completely useless here. Control Y. There we go. Okay, I have to remember the, the copy and paste. Yeah, the white is killing me too. We need to make it worse. Okay, so Def Theme Hell. I think that we also saw that there was a, um, let's see, it was a help. Come on, dude. Let me go, let me go. User imprisonment, it's already happening. Uh, let's see, Def Theme. Uh, we need to do Provide Theme at the bottom. So I'll copy that too, jump back over to Emacs, and then press, uh, uh, was it Control Y? There we go, okay. So the theme faces, we don't really know what those are yet. But I will save that. Um, Dawalish. Child is a Vim user, yeah. Okay, yeah, hell is other people's Emacs. Well, obviously hell is uh, is not having my own configuration because I'm, I'm too uh, dependent on it at this point. I guess that's the the dark side of system crafting is that you cannot use the software uh, without your own stuff. Bill says next week we will make the best Emacs config, right? I don't know. We could try it. 
Okay, so we got to speed this up because we're wasting time. Let me see if I can grab. So tell me about these faces. Where's the manual uh, information? View in manual. There we go. All right, def theme. Macro de de declares a theme in a, as that's the name of a custom theme. Uh, the optional argument doc should be a string describing the theme. I really feel like this should be doable without having to, to load it in a file. Two special theme names are disallowed. I don't care about that. Provide theme, sure. Um, ah, var expression. What the hell, man? Go back. All right, so custom theme set faces, uh, face spec. Okay, so it is basically the same as what we would see in applying. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm having trouble with the, the info. Like for some reason, the key bindings in info mode have gotten wonky on me recently. Applying customizations, defining faces. Just got to make sure I use the right syntax. I don't want to be screwing with this for a while. Honestly, using a theme for this is probably also the, the dumb way to do it. You know, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to do it the easy way because I'm lazy right now. And uh, this doesn't need to be perfect. This just needs to be uh, annoying. So we're going to go back to init that. Oh, come on. Going to go back to it. Well, you know, I keep changing my mind about which direction I want to go with this because I'm having such a hard time typing that it's going to drive me nuts. So let's just do it this way. I got to close the file in the other editor. Yeah, leave me alone. Now my own Emacs is driving me nuts. Okay, let's close that. Yeah, save that, save that, whatever. Okay. It's gone now. So, package install evil. Uh, yeah, we'll, I'll fix that later. Um, also, set face attribute. I guess default is the first one we want to mess with. So, I'm going to start tweaking this a little bit. Probably should do it in the other editor, but let me just start putting some things in first. So in the uh, the spirit of hot dog stand, I think that we're going to try to go with a foreground of, uh, let's say, come on, um, consult colors. Is there one for that? Colors, list colors display. There we go. So yellow. Yellow is just plain old yellow. I think it won't be visible, but we're going to find out. So let's let's take a look. Let's see. Uh, Windows uh, 3.1 hot dog stand. Yeah, I, my sanity is definitely deteriorating. Okay, so hot dog stand. If you've never seen this before, it's horrifying. And that's the point. So let's see if we can start with something like this and, and then even make it worse. Okay, so the... the the text apparently is white on red, which is really bad. So we're going to do that. How about that? Let's see. White. Come on. White. And then uh, background. Red. And also I want to set the mode line to yellow. It's going to be awful. So we can set the face attribute for mode line. Uh, we'll take the font out. Uh, the weight. Yeah, I think what we should do is make it italic, but I don't remember the actual th way to do that right now. So then the background should be yellow and the foreground. Let's just make it uh, purple just for the sake of fun. Ditch the pretty indentation, everything in one line. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, like the, the worst Emacs config needs to have the, the ugliest configuration file possible too. So I, I agree with you. So here we go. Let's uh, let's pull up the config again. Go back to vterm. Run it. Oh, that's that's lovely. How about that as a starting point? I think my eyes are gonna start bleeding in about ten seconds. Um. <laughs> so maybe I should tweak that color a little bit because I can't even look at the letters. There's no way I'm going to be able to spend any time in that. Uh, let's take a look at the original uh, hot dog stand. I mean, a yellow background with a red mode line could be good enough. Yes, that is horrifying. It's awful. 
Maybe I can tone down the red slightly so that it's not so eye boiling. Let's go to, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to do it this way. Init.el. Ah, come on. Init.el. All right, let's go. Whoa. With the, the syntax highlighting, I can't even read this anymore. Okay, let's go to default. How, is there like a dark red? It needs, still needs to be annoying, but it can't be too bad. All right, that's a little bit better. I mean, that's actually kind of pleasant. So um, I don't think that's good enough. It still needs to be bad. Colors. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Orange, red. That could be good. How about that? Let's try orange, red. If it's a little bit more readable, orange, red. Whew, that's worse. My God. Okay. We got to fix this. Okay. We got all kinds of nice, you know, special colors here that are a little bit too subtle for the purposes. It's just red, right? I mean, magenta, we could try magenta and see if magenta makes it even worse, but I don't think, I think that goes beyond torture at that point. Yeah, I can't look at that. <laughs> uh, okay, fire brick, maybe fire brick is cool. It's probably too subtle also. Yeah, look, that, that just looks kind of nice. Tomato, come on, come on. Okay, there we go. So we got like a red three. Red three may be a little bit less eye burning so that we can make it through the stream. Okay, red two, red three. Okay, that's better. That's better. That's not going to kill me. White on salmon? Yeah, okay. All right, so that's a good starting point where it just looks awful. Um, but what else? I think we should do some funky things. Like, um, I know I've never customized the menu bar before. So how about that? Uh, let's see, what's the face for uh, menu bar? Uh, describe face, menu. Okay, so menu. We're gonna try to grab this. Oh, that selection needs to be terrible too. So we'll fix that too. That's gotta be magenta for sure. Um, what is it, uh, Alt W? Okay, and then Control W, no. Control Y, no. I think I already killed it. What is it? Man, I am just not good with these key bindings. You know, I made a whole video about that, obviously. Change face with every keystroke? Hmm. That is pretty evil. All right, so... Control Y. Thank God. All right, I figured out the right sequence of keys to press. So now we're going to go menu. I don't think I can change the color of the background of the menu. I mean, let's see. Nah. But we can definitely change the font size. So how about we change the height to, well, I hope this works. It may not actually work. Height to 300. No, it doesn't do anything. That's unfortunate. Probably because it's being rendered with GTK, we can't uh, mess with it. Uh, but the fact that it's there is bad enough. I don't like it. <laughs> So um, what we can also do though, is make the mode line stupidly large, which might be kind of fun. So how about that? Let's just say height. Um, and that's also something that could be tweaked. So let's do this. Ha <laughs> ha, there we go. So we just need a really comically large mode line. This is gonna get in the way all day long. Um, and then, yeah, I'm starting to think we need to start tweaking some of these parameters. Uh, John says selection should be the same color as the default face background. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Set face attribute. Oh, come on. Let me just copy the line. There's two things I need to change here. So we're going to do, um, oh, what was that? So I'm getting random, uh, sounds that I can't even follow. So I think I got a, okay. Subscriber. Thank you. Whomever subscribed. I can't actually see it. So let's go uh, Alt W, Control Y. So we need to do selection and we also need to do uh, what else? Selection. So the, the background should be the same as the, the real background. So red three. So now, whoa, 
Invalid face selection. Okay. Um, what was the face called for that? Select. Uh, secondary selection. That's not what it is. I tweaked that somewhere. The font looks way too nice. You're right. We got to fix that. I just need to install a font for that purpose. Also, yes, uh, the font needs to be uh, variable width and not fixed pitch. Let's see. What is it called? Does anybody remember what the uh, selection face is called? I've got it in my Emacs config somewhere. Let's see. Uh, select. How about face attribute? I thought I had it in here somewhere. Probably not. This is already Unix porn worthy. Yeah, I think that they would, they would kick me out of there if I tried to, to post this. My, what a large mode line you have. Yes. Okay, so here's one thing we'll do. I'm going to save this. I'm going to jump out of it. And then I'm going to go into, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to find out. I'm going to go to this manifesto SCM. Let's see what kind of uh, fonts geeks might have here. And if nothing else, we'll just use a terrible uh, variable with font. So font dash. Anything comic? Oh, comic new way, but that one kind of like looks okay. I mean, it's a starting point. We could try it. So let me grab that and drop it into this. Haha. <laughs> Dominic says, new people, I'm going to watch System Crafters to optimize my workflow in Emacs, and then they find that I'm making the world's worst Emacs configuration. I know. Uh, we got to change it up a little bit on the channel sometimes. What else we got here? Um, Fantastic Sans. That's probably another one of those. Space Grotesque. What is this font? Proportional sans serif face. I gotta see what this repo looks like. Any screenshots? No. Oh. Okay, that doesn't really, you know, give me the right vibe. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Uh, I guess they're kind of trying to, like, uh, bite the style of uh, the Iosefka face website. I mean, that could work. Yeah, some of these fonts are actually good. So what fonts do we have that are just basic? Uh, font dash, there's Bitstream Vera. We could go with the, uh, yeah, Bitstream Vera Sans. I mean, that's kind of like a basic font. Comic Sans, we don't have access to that right now, unfortunately. Because I'm in uh, Geeks. Font MS. No, we don't have any kind of Microsoft font things. Deja vu. Extended, expanded version of the F Vera font family. Okay, so let's go into manifest. We're going to pull in uh, font-bitstream-vera. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to find out. Let's uh, pull up our profile. Liberation Serif. That's a good idea, actually, edit merge decks. I'll try that, too. Uh, invalid face selection. Okay, yeah, we also need to have uh, random error messages yelling at you. For no reason. Okay, so set face attribute. Um, let's see, bitstream Vera Sans. Is that gonna work? Haha. Uh, okay, that's not bad enough though. I mean, that's only sort of marginally annoying. I think it needs to be way more annoying. And I think a uh, serif font face is is the way to go. <laughs> yeah, Goon Ninja says any serif font is hideous. Uh, let's see. So I think we have the liberation fonts. Uh, let's see, font liberation. Yeah, okay, that sounds great. Let's do that. So we have serif font. 
I need a font viewer to figure out what the actual names are for these though. So font liberation is the one. Let's go into manifest. Um, font liberation. Then we're going to go back into VTerm. We're going to kill this Emacs and then pull it up again. Liberation Serif. Yeah. Ransom note. I don't think so. Okay. Init.el. So let's go here to Bitstream Vera Sands and put Liberation Serif in. I don't know if that's the way to pronounce that. Liberation. Oh, yeah, that's much better. That's what I'm talking about. Let's put this to about a 300 size, maybe. That's awesome. Okay, so now we definitely have no sense for uh, indentation or alignment in the text, which is exactly what we want. Um, so I w wasn't watching the chat closely. Does anybody figure out what the face is for the um, selection? I, I, I feel like the word is at the tip of my tongue. All right, it's it's a very obvious word when you find it, but it's not something that you would think of um, offhand. Okay, some of these things here, let's just keep scrolling a little bit. Uh, cursor? That can't be it, right? Shadowed text. Highlight, that's it. I think highlight is the one. So let's go with highlight. And then we're going to set this to uh, red three. So now when you, ah, come on now, that's not the right one. Region or mark, maybe region. Let's try region. Ah, perfect. So the problem is we can still see that the text color is changing. I think if maybe we set the foreground to nil, it will, it will uh, take that whole thing off. Yeah, I can't even tell what I'm selecting text now, which is going to be a real problem for uh, doing anything here. Okay, so uh, menu does nothing. Let's get that out of here. <laughs> I like it so far. Okay, so what else can we do here? Um, so we, we were talking about sounds. I don't know if anybody has managed to find any uh, funny sounds to put in. Cool. Color ideas uh, and links to sounds. Thank you, uh, Davis Richard, for putting these together. Morse code conversion package exists. Hmm. Oh, boy. That sounds kind of interesting. Does it play something? Morse region and unmorse region. Let me just... Hold on. Yakety sax. Oh man, I had a great idea um, for a sound that I could play inside the editor, but I can't find it anywhere. And Alex probably knows the one I'm talking about, but uh, it, there was a game for Sega called Chuck on the Forever Man at the very beginning of the opening of that game. Or at some point in the game, the, char the main character just makes this really weird animalistic scream. And it just sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know if I could find it if I wanted to probably get the video demonetized if I did it anyway and let's let's say uh, let's get de demonetized by checking this video out car backfire oh, that would be uh, fairly oh my god <laughs> okay we don't want to be uh, kicked off of, of live right now color ideas okay case has been giving some colors oh boy so this is the kind of thing we need post command hook uh, random color face so I'm going to drop this in because I think this is going to be good. So let me uh, use, what is it? Control Y. Okay. Whew, that I can't look at that. Whoopee cushion uh, key press sound. Yeah, I think so. So random color, uh, red, green, blue format. Let's see. Yeah, we got random function. That's great. Random color face, uh, face frame. Post command hook random color face, set face attribute face. What face is it going to actually pull though from this code? Let's uh, let's try it this way. Okay, I'm going to eval this function. Optional face frame. 
I don't think it's going to um, pick anything. Let's see. <laughs> List faces display. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't want to change every face. I think it's going to be insane. So what we could do, one thing that I had in mind was actually changing the mode line just to make it really annoying because you have this thing, this huge bar down there that just keeps changing the whole time. Mode line. All right, so post command hook, um, find file, uh, let's see. Uh, searching for program, no such file or directory, whatever. Yikes. Doesn't seem to be doing anything quite yet. I set that, right? Ugh, I can't even read that, jeez. Um, no. Does not seem to be set, did I not do that? Oh, there it is. Oh, God. Look at that. Good job, Case. <laughs> That's almost even worse than what it was before. So, yeah. Now we just have this randomly rotating color as the background of the... <laughs> and foreground of the mode line, which is awesome. Um, let's see. What else? I mean, like, we could do the whole default face as well. But I think that we're all going to have a seizure if we do that. So, maybe... One thing that would be funny, though, is like some of the syntax. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, describe face. Oh, God, come on. Can I press meta X here? Describe face. Face. Thank you. Oh, I can't read that. Font lock function name face. Okay, let's do this. Um, what was it? Alt W. Control Y, Control Y, Control Y. Okay, so now we're gonna um, make some of the syntax just totally flip out. The colors are gonna, just gonna get nuts every time you move. Zach says it's gonna make me sick. I hope it doesn't actually make anybody sick. Uh, Marcel says default to replace instead of insert mode. Ooh, that one sounds pretty nasty. All right, so um, let's see. I want to set the font lock faces. So um, the one here for foreground, we're, we're not going to be able to read this code anymore. It's going to be awesome. So describe face. Font lock built in face. So let's try that first. Font lock built in face. Okay. And uh, what other font locks do we have? Let me go down here so I can actually read this. Uh, font, oops, describe face, font lock. Um, let's see, string face. We need to have like a, what's, what's the one for the defund there? I forgot this one also. Describe face, uh, font lock, function name face. Let's go with that, font lock, function name face. This should be bad enough. Okay, let's try this. All right. Fantastic. I think we shouldn't change the background color, though. I think that it should just be the, the foreground color changing because it's going to... Wow. Um, beep every time. <laughs> beep every time garbage collection occurs. Is there a, There's a beep function, right? Hold on. Do I even have it turned on? Beep. Beep. Yeah. No, but this one probably does though. Let's see, beep. No, okay, no beeps. Probably. Um, any of you ever seen that game Cruelty Squ Squad? I think we are uh, playing Cruelty Emacs right now. So describe face, uh, font lock keyword face. We're gonna do the same thing there. We're gonna stop setting the background for those two. I want it to just be like the foreground text changing all the time. Just so that it's extra stupid. And then we'll restart Emacs in a second. What was it? Keyword face? Ah, let's just do this one. This is just excellent. I think I should also randomize the, uh, the mode line size as well. Or just like very uh, subtle changes to the default face size as well. 
Um, let's see. I'm going for font lock. Oops, font lock keyword face frame. Oh, let's see. Void variable frame. What are you talking about? Oh, right here. There we go. Boom. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. This is like, you know, looking at a Christmas tree almost. Can the bell function beep? Yeah, it doesn't beep for me right now. Uh, post, yeah, so post self insert hook. Uh, that's another one that would be good. Ooh, look at that. That's just nausea inducing. Okay, what else are we saying here? Sergio said, when you said worst, I did not expect it's something so hideous. I love it. Yeah, we haven't even gotten into like the, the good stuff yet. This is just making it look ugly as hell. Set up garbage collection really low, just slow things down. Hmm. Yeah, that's another one um, that I hadn't really thought about too much. So GC threshold, it should just be garbage collecting all the time. And we really do need some sounds. Let's go to uh, freesound.org. Let's just search for annoying. Is there anything for annoying here? The worst sound in the world. I'm going to have to turn the volume down probably. Let's see how bad this is. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Annoying horn. Nah, that's too loud. Okay, that, that's good for garbage collection, I think. If you put that for the garbage collector, then... <laughs> People are going to be really upset, I think, which is exactly what we want. Oh, I have to log in? That's not fun. It's Creative Commons Zero, which is perfect. I just need to be able to get in here. Username or email. I've got a username for this site. Um, Let me see. Let me do this really quick. I'm going to try to see if I can grab my password for this. Um, I'm going to put it on webcam so you can look at my face while I'm trying to find my password for this site for a second. So let me grab. Uh, what is it? Free sound, free sound .org. And I got the password there. Gotta make sure not to Let's log in. All right, cool. I think I'm good. Let me, let me copy some text so I don't just like blurt my password on that site out. Okay, here we go. Going back to screen. Boom. All right, so we got the annoying drone here. Uh, yeah, add a hook to play that sound every time it saves. We should definitely randomize the sounds as well. That's going to be horrible. Download. 